Well, I'm delighted to have representatives from Doughty Street Chambers and Kevin Winters Law here to present the legal advice on the proposed scrapping of the Human Rights Act. They've come here to the European Parliament, they have spoke to a number of MEPs, uh, researchers, NGOs, organisations from across Europe who are quite interested to find out about the implications of the British government's proposal to scrap the Human Rights Act. Some people ask, well, what did the Human, uh, the Human Rights Act ever give us? What did the European Convention of ever, uh, Human Rights ever give us? And people say nothing but everything. And of course it did. Like when you consider the people who have a disability, that they have been able to get access to the, their rights only by using the Human Rights Act to get access to the European Convention of Human Rights. Hillsborough just on the TV uh, lately. We've seen the results of that. And the families of Hillsborough only got the outcome that they did after many, many years of trying to prove their loved ones were not guilty of anything other than going to a football match and should never have died in the way that they did. They wouldn't have got the result that they did if there hadn't been a Human Rights Act that gave them access to the European Convention of Human Rights because, for instance, in this case, they were able to cite Article 2, the right to life, which meant there had to be a proper investigation. Obviously for us in Ireland we're very concerned because this is a breach technically of the Good Friday Agreement and it is an infringement without doubt of the spirit of the Good Friday Agreement. When you consider for instance a new beginning to policing that here we have the Code of Conduct of the PSNI and that is able to be monitored in a way by members of the policing board because we have the Human Rights Act that gives us access to the European Convention of Human Rights. We were promised in the Good Friday Agreement that we would have a Bill of Rights plus, plus that means more rights than what is currently contained within the European Convention of Human Rights. And what are we going to get if the British government scrap and repeal, as it's called, the Human Rights Act? We're going to get less rights than what is contained within the European Convention of Human Rights. Therefore, it's crucially important that we use this document, this legal advice, as part of the resistance to what the British government are doing or the British government intends to do. The, the NGOs are very engaged uh, in this issue, very concerned about this issue, as are we. So collectively we intend to mount a big campaign, be part of it. For groups that I represent, a lot of the fear, obviously there's the truth inquiries that are going on, but the other side of that, that's the civil and political rights. The other side is the access to socioeconomic things. So although the Human Rights Act isn't designed around those rights, actual access to health care and well-being and access to things like mental health, things like that will really be impacted. A lot of our groups who deal with disability rights, who deal with children's rights, who deal with older people's rights, are very worried about access to services because obviously public authorities have responsibilities under the Human Rights Act. If that's stripped away, people are going to have to go all the way to Strasbourg to have their rights realised, and that's just not realistic for a lot of the people that we would deal with. I'm here to support the campaign uh, to ensure that the Human Rights Act remains in situ and, um, and they oppose the Tory government uh, in trying to do away with it. People with disabilities uh, have experienced uh, human rights violations over the years. 25 years ago uh, they were denied education in terms of the health trust ran their school and uh, so uh, Things have changed within that since the Good Friday Agreement. There has been a, a renewed emphasis on ensuring that the rights of people with learning disabilities are, uh, are recognised and uh, that, that they're given the same rights as everybody else. Uh, I think it was a useful meeting. Uh, it was a meeting of minds. We brought a lot of uh, different groups over to the launch itself. Um, there was certainly a lot of interest in the Parliament itself. Um, the big worry is that the British government, Conservative government, by cherry-picking aspects of the agreement that you disagree with, um, is going to impact on people right across the island of Ireland. It's not just uh, legacy issues, it's it's day-to-day -day issues of um, the rollout of uh, uh, an inclusive policing service. But it's also for you know human rights of people with disabilities, um, a, 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 the large, large sector of Irish society. So it, it, it affects everyone. Um, it's not about the past, it's also about the future. So it's about pulling uh, as many people together, um, trying to organise, trying to uh, organise that fight back against this British government proposal. 
Um, the difficulty, of course, is that we don't know when they're actually proposing to introduce this. Uh, we know it was in our manifesto. We know the, the Queen in our speech alluded to it. But uh, outside of that, we don't really know when it's going to come. But it's coming down the tracks and it's up to us and like-minded people to try and organise and uh, uh, stop this uh, uh, undermining of you know, the human rights of people uh, in Ireland but also in Britain.